Nice. What's going on, fella or team? <laughs> How are we doing, fellas, females? <clears throat> what is on? How's everybody doing today? It is AJ from Doc Fitness. Okay. Super stoked for today's session. Um, today is kettlebell swing tips and how to fix certain errors in your kettlebell swing. Okay. But we're going to give this a little bit of time for people to pop on. Sorry, I'm a little uh, tardy to the party. We just um, did a little cold plunge with our crew here at Docs. But um, once you guys pop on, um, let me know where you guys are uh, signed in from and um, would love to uh, drop in some questions or anything like that. And uh, also, let me know if anybody um, has any specific questions that uh, you want to work on with the uh, kettlebell swing. Okay, Obviously, it's one of the most technical moves. But if you're on here, then clearly you have some kind of knack for kettlebells. Um, you might be a kettlebell like myself. I love kettlebells. Um, just like the uh, anybody who technically follows Kettlebell Kings or follows me over at Docs Fitness. Okay. Um, so we got some people coming in from California. Sterling, what up? Alberta. Is that Canada? Nice. And I, I love the interaction that we have with these live sessions. So like I said, uh, just pop on, say what's up, give me a little shaka, you know, whatever you guys are feeling, um, and let me know where you guys are coming in. But also, don't hesitate to drop in any questions about the swing, okay? Wisconsin, PA, Pennsylvania, let's go, baby. Go Birds this weekend. we got a big game coming up <laughs> from Norway, Minnesota. Go Chiefs! Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, hopefully the Chiefs and the Birds uh, make it to the Super Bowl this year. That'd be awesome. Chicago, Bay Area, Germany. I love it. Keep popping on. I love this. This is the one beautiful thing when it comes to uh, the social media platforms is that it brings people together um, who are like-minded, and in this case, kettlebells being that. So London, Four Corners, New Mexico, beauty. All right, and I'm signing in from South Jersey. So it's a small little beach town. And this right here, if for if you guys aren't familiar, it's a – it's a boathouse. Um, the boathouse was named after my grandfather who goes by and went by his doc, hence Doc's Fitness, okay? So by no means am I a doctor of any sorts. Um, I guess some people would say uh, a doctor of kettlebells, but that's incredibly cheesy. But uh, <laughs> um, but all right, so we're getting some people popping on here. So like I said, today's session is going to be a swing fix session. I just want to give you some tips. Okay, we're going to go over two specific things with the kettlebell swing that um, tend to be very large errors that I tend to see Okay, um, from beginners or even actually like um, for people that have been practicing them for quite some time. Sometimes you lose a little bit of focus with the kettlebell swing, Okay, like myself too. And um, so I like looking at the kettlebell swing in, um, you know, it's, it's important to um, fix the swing, okay, in some cases. So, and this is something that kind of dawned on me because I, what's it called, for the longest time swung the kettlebell a certain way. Um, and I'll dive a little bit deeper into it, but um, it wasn't in, up until probably I would say in the last like 18 months that I realized that I was just robbing myself of the benefits of the kettlebell swing. So there's the fixed portion of it. Um, there's the build portion of it in the sense of like, if you're new to kettlebells and you're trying to essentially just, you know, build the kettlebell swing. You're not familiar with the movement in itself. So that's the other phase and then sharpen the swing. Okay. So, um, build fix and sharpen the kettlebell swing. So sharpen the swing. And that's something again, where if you've been practicing with kettlebells for quite some time and you know, you, you just want to have, you know, you want to make the most out of every single rep. So with that being said, um, sometimes it's good to have a little bit of a reset and, uh, and you know, drill out your swing and do a little bit of a uh, practice work that helps to build up a stronger kettlebell swing. Okay. So like I said, I like the shakas popping on, keep coming on. And, um, what's called, if you have any questions about the swing and how to sort it out, or, you know, any kind of, uh, errors or anything that you want to be fixed, then just pop them on. And we'll get things rolling. Okay. All right. So, and then at the end of this, we're going to finish it off with a, a five minute kettlebell finisher. Okay. So you guys want to stick on towards the end and, um, and we'll be good. Okay. So, so 
I'm just going to speak um, about my experience with kettlebells and what I was talking about earlier when it came to this realization with the swing. Okay. So what I mean by that is, so for the longest time, I was under the reasoning that you, the, the kettlebell swing was a hundred percent hinge was a hundred percent hinge. And all it is is a hinge movement. It's a functional movement and all you're doing is hinging back and popping your hips forward. Um, and I would swing like this for, for literally the last like, you know, 12 years, you know, like anytime I'd be practicing with kettlebells, but at any time somebody said like, or, you know, like incorporate the word squat into the swing, like my eyebrows would raise and it would be like, no, there's no squats in the swing. <laughs> um, so what I mean by this is my swings for the longest time looked a little something like this. Here, hips get pulled back, hinging, eyes straight down. Now, for me, I always thought that those were phenomenal swings. I like, I literally thought that's how you would swing. And obviously, like, I would say that those are, those are good swings, but they're not great swings. Are you reaping the benefits, the most benefits that you possibly can get from those types of swings, in my opinion? No. <laughs> um, and the realization came last year when I had the opportunity to go work with um, a one-on-one -on -one session with Pavel Matzek, who's a master instructor with Strong First. And when I performed some, he, you know, it was just a one-on-one -on -one session over in Czech Republic in Prague. And, um, and as soon as I got there within five minutes, he goes, he goes, okay, you know, like, let me see your swings. And, um, and I did swings like that. And he's like, your swings now. They are good, but they're not that good, <laughs> which just means that they could be better. <laughs> so, Pop, if you're on this, I appreciate you because you put me on the path to actually creating a stronger, more explosive and powerful swing. OK, and that's what I would really want to dive into today. OK, so right in itself are very hingy. OK, so I would be again. In the assumption that the swing is just hinge and you're just pushing your hips back. But in reality, you want to sink a little bit deeper and get at the bottom of the swing to create a little bit more of a squat at the bottom of the swing. Okay? Because again, that's where you're going to generate your power from your glutes, your quads, and your core. Okay? Now, again, if I'm somebody who's going to be just swinging here, it's hard to get the feel factor of your of your quads, your glutes, and your core, or especially the lower half. Okay, your heart. It's hard to get that power generated when you're just working the hinge. Okay, so what I want you, one of the big takeaways that I want you to take away from this whole session is changing the mindset of 100% hinge with the swings into more of 90% hinge, 10% squat, okay? Or it's like, it could be a little bit more like 80% hinge, 20% squat, depending on the weight, okay? So <clears throat> how do we fix this? How do we go from being very, very hingy to sprinkling a little bit of a squat into it, okay? Introduce the sumo dead, okay? Now, a lot of times, if you are a beginner, it is important to focus on getting this motion down. So I would say if you are a beginner, then you do want to focus the hinge first, okay? Then over time, you start incorporating a little bit more of a squat to it. So there's two differences with deads, okay? You have an RDL dead or in most cases, a kettlebell dead, but then you also have the sumo dead, okay? So the RDL dead, okay, you're gonna be standing over the bell and you'll notice it is very, very hingy. And again, this is a great movement for beginners and a little, it's a great movement, honestly, for anybody, but especially for beginners who are having trouble with the idea of pushing those hips back, okay? So right here, the hips go back, okay, and notice, that back is nearly flat with your hips and you're standing tall, okay? 
So this is a great movement to practice the hips going back. Now, in my opinion, a, a swing is more connected to a sumo deck, okay? And what I mean by this is that you're going to have a slightly wider stance with the toes pointed outwards, okay? Okay, so this is the front view. It's the same idea here where you're pulling those hips back, but you're sinking a little bit deeper, okay? And with those toes out, okay, is going to allow you to sink a little bit deeper. Now, going from this point of view, that profile, hips back, sinking a hair deeper here, okay? So notice that angle. It's a much more distinct angle from the knees to the hips to the shoulders, and my hips are back and down, okay? And this essentially is going to be a little bit more connected towards an actual swing, okay? Because this is where our power comes from. Think of it this way, too. If you are looking to do a broad jump, okay, or a vertical jump, tell me this. <clears throat> Am I going to get further if I jump like this? with the hips only going back here and going forward? Or am I going to jump further by sinking a little bit deeper down and driving forward, okay? Think about that. I mean, if, in reality, hips back, think of here. Hips back, eyes down, and jumping. Versus back and down. It's still a hinge movement, but you're sprinkling a little bit of squat and you're using your legs to generate power to get yourself going, okay? <clears throat> now, that's just a, uh, that's, and now that's something that you can incorporate within your practice, okay? Um, when it comes to trying to learn to sink a little bit deeper with the hinge and the squat, okay? I'm just going to read some comments what we got here. Nothing about kettlebells, good sir. Are there resources you could suggest to learn again? All right. Good, good, good. We got some people popping on. Okay. Beauty. All right. Nice, nice. All right. All right. So we're still going strong. Like I said, pop on, drop some questions here and there. All right. So all that to be said, what we want to think of and what I like to um, like coach here over at Docs is thinking of the swing as 90% hinge, 10% squat, okay? Or 80% hinge, 20% squat. Because I promise you, this is like, it was like a realization that kind of blew my mind away. I was just talking about this with uh, another one of my buddies who's also a kettlebell nerd. And I was just, just thinking, I was like, I was like, dude, for the longest time, I would swing in one direction, like with just being very, very hingy. And then it wasn't until this past year or so where I was just like realizing that the, the, the swing in itself has squat to it. Okay. And that's where we need, that's where we generate our power. Just like I just showed there with the broad jump example. Okay. You're obviously going to get further if you sink a little bit deeper into your hinge. Okay. Now the, that to be said too, what you'll see people who tend to just hinge and they just get very hippie with the hinge. Okay you'll feel that the wrists are only, are the only part at the bottom of the swing, okay? So an idea or a feel factor that we can incorporate is trying to get our forearms into our inner thighs, okay? And that's gonna allow us to sink a little bit deeper. Now, in order to get and try to really put that to use and put that to practice, I would say to, do two things, okay? So first off, I'm always under the reasoning that in order to create a habit or uh, uh, fix up a swing or fix up any kind of movement of within any kind of kettlebell practice um, is that you, you test it out. So you do the skill, which is the kettlebell swing in this case. Uh, then you do the drill, and then you test the skill again. So skill, drill, skill, skill, drill, skill. So in this case, I'll just run through it real quick. So I'm going to go through one example, of how I just showed with the swing being too hingy, okay, not getting deep enough. So this is the drill facet here. OK, 
okay? Again, looks like a decent swing, but you're not reaping the amount of benefits that you can be, okay? Now, I'm going to go through the drill, okay? And in the drill in this case is I'm going to be doing vert jumps. I'm going to be jumping up and down, but notice where my legs go and where my hips go back and down. So from here, just going to go three vert jumps where I'm back, up, down. Hips getting pushed back. Up, down, down. Okay. Another drill that I'm going to incorporate is the sumo dead. Okay. So I just focused up on power there. Now I'm looking to get the feel of the forearms connected to the inner thigh. So we're here because again, this is the motion and this is the bottom of the swing that I want to be connected. Here, standing tall. Hips get pulled back, stand tall. Hips back, stand tall, hips back, stand tall. Good. Bells out in front. Now I'm gonna go back to the skill. Hips back, tilt, feeling. I want this form inside part of my thigh. Eyes on the horizon. Thinking about those vert jumps, pressing the feet through the ground. Beauty. Okay. So hopefully you kind of notice the difference there. I'm telling you, it's going to be an absolute game changer for you um, because, like, within your entire kettlebell practice too. You don't realize how tired you get when you're talking <laughs> and uh, trying to do swings at the same time. <laughs> Oh, anywho, um, all right. So, really wanted to hit home with that, okay? Because again, when it comes to the swing, I want everybody to reap the benefits of it, okay? And uh, I believe at the end of the day, when you are able to sprinkle a little bit of squat at the bottom of that swing um, after the hinge, okay? So again, 80, 20, or 90, 10, then um, your swings are going to become a hell of a lot more powerful. Okay. All right. Um, beauty. All right. That's the first part we got. Resources. Thank you. Going to help a lot. Peyton. All right. Beauty on YouTube. Nice. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right. Um, next go. Okay. One thing that I want to, that one thing that I tend to see a lot are people hinging too soon. Okay. So what I mean by that is right here. When they're swinging, okay, puts an ample amount of pressure on your lower back. So anytime we're here, we do not want that, obviously, because that just puts a hell of a lot of pressure on your lower back. So we want to avoid that at all costs. So if you are somebody who tends to hinge too soon, okay, now there's two drills or two feel factors that I like to incorporate. One, the naked swing, where you're here, down, so you let the arms drop, feel the biceps connect with the rib cage, and then the hips get pulled back, okay? Stand tall, connect, okay? I forget who said it. Um, I think it was a kettlebell coach, uh, Lauren Kansky, I think who it is. She talks about how you can Velcro, okay? Velcro the biceps and you want to wait until the biceps and the velcro connects with your rib cage once you're here then you get pushed back then you're standing tall okay but you don't want to pull those hips back first because then the bell is going to be going below your knees and then when you're it's below the knees it puts a lot of pressure on the lower back okay so there's the naked swing okay a visual cue that you can think of okay is Think of yourself in knee-deep water, okay? If you're in knee-deep water, you don't want to hit the bell with the water, okay? We want to avoid that at all costs, okay? Um, so with that being said, when you are bringing your hands down and the Velcro connects with your rib cage, then obviously the bell is going to stay above those knees slightly, or at least the handle is going to stay above the knees and everything is going to stay nice and tight. 
Never in the history of kettlebell swings has anybody hit themselves in this, in the, uh, in the sweet spot, okay? Nobody's ever hit themselves there due to the fact that the ball and foul, okay, is always going to be below, okay? So that's another thing to just, just give yourself some, um, some peace of mind, all right? The next drill for somebody who is hinging too soon are goblet cleans, and these are great for these are great for a ton of drills, but um, also great for the descent. So, what we're going to do here as another drill is you're standing over the bell, getting yourself almost in that sumo dead position. Drive those feet through the ground, up. Okay, that's essentially, that's working the power, the ascent of the swing, but the descent of the swing, working timing. Feel, slowly lower the bell, feel the bell connect, hips get pulled back. Drive it up, hands slowly come down, feel the rib cage and the biceps connect, back down. Up, down, back, up, down, down, back, because this in itself is the swing, right? Back, down, back, down, back, down, back, down. So it's all about, it's all about trying to create those building blocks that help make your swing as strong and safe as humanly possible, okay? All right, so, all right, I'm talking a lot right now. All right, so right there, what we just went through are two factors. People whose swings tend to be a little bit too hingy, okay? And you're just wristing yourself. You're literally just getting the bell underneath your, um, you're not reaching further, back, like uh, you're not reaching deep enough into the hinge, okay? So you're not sprinkling enough squat. So we spoke about that a little bit. Um, hinging too soon, okay? That's another huge factor, okay? <sighs> All right, so, um, and then again, with the hinging too soon, we want to incorporate a little bit of a gaba clean, okay? We can do the gaba clean and think of the slow descent, okay? And also the naked swing. That's another really good one. Thinking of the Velcro on your biceps connecting with your rib cage, okay? Um, beauty, okay, good, good, good. All right. So those are just two factors. Those are two common errors that I tend to see with the swings. And again, if you're new to kettlebells, then these are those drills that I just spoke about, the sumo dead, the naked swing, the broad jump or vert jump to increase power and increase a solid bottom position of your swing. Those are great drills. Even if you're somebody who's been practicing with kettlebells for years and you just want a little bit of a reset. It's another incredible movement or incredible drills that you can incorporate into your own practice. And then on top of that, if you are somebody who is hinging too soon, then again, you still want to incorporate or you want to be able to create that timing. And in order to create that solid timing is the naked swing, okay, like we just spoke about, but also the gaba clean and breaking it down piece by piece, okay? There's no need to rush these swings either, okay, especially when it comes to um, it, especially when it comes to us, like pulling our hips back, okay, which is just a factor of someone who tends to rush things a little bit too much. All right, so too hingy, hinging too soon. Um, all right, I think we should do our kettlebell finisher. Okay, what do you guys think? Has anybody got some kettlebells there to uh, swing some bells? Okay, give some people a second if they want to pop on. All right, um, let's see, what are their good resources? to learn yeah raul my man raul from uh where's he coming from not sure too exactly but uh oh albuquerque nice so he just asked uh, if there's any good resources that i would suggest to learn kettlebells honestly you're in the right spot you're in kettlebell kings kettlebell kings has an incredible uh, library of resources when it comes to workouts but also sessions like this when it comes to learning the kettlebell technique you can go into their youtube and go into their instagram um you know, and also they obviously have phenomenal kettlebells as well. Um, but you also can pop over to my Instagram. It's Docs Fitness. And Docs is, you know, I'm, I'm all about trying to educate people in a very nonverbal, quick, effective um, uh, way. So, uh, you know, if you pop on there, then you'll kind of have an idea 
But um, beauty, beauty, beauty. All right, who else we got rolling in? All right, so now all we're going to be doing is we're going to do a five-minute kettlebell finisher, and it's just going to be swings, okay? I just took my watch off, but I'm actually going to need this. Um, what it's going to be is it's going to be a, a good amount of swings. What we're going to be doing is it's going to be five minutes, and that's it, five minutes, and you're going to go between 15 and 20 swings. It's going to be EMOM style, okay? Um, hopefully you guys are ready to rock and roll. Uh, I know I've just been talking my freaking mouth off like nonsense this whole time. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, beauty. All right, no questions? All right, what do we got wrong? Beauty, beauty. All right, so what it's going to be. Okay, so it's going to be a five-minute um, finisher. You got 15 to 20 swings in between, and you're going to rest the remainder of that minute, Okay. And I will be the uh, I will be the timer, and I will let you know when we will be going, and we will be going very soon. All right. So right here, I got a 24k with uh, kettlebell kings, one of my go-to bells. I think it's good to have an idea of what bells are best to be used in different um, different workouts. Okay, and I think that's a that's a huge thing to uh, try to focus on. Uh, beauty. Questions. Nice, nice. All right. Five minute finisher. What do we got here? We got some questions. Do you? Oh, okay. Press and join. All right. I know. Um, also, since we're talking kettlebell swings and we're talking swing techniques and whatnot, I have my me personally, AJ here at Docs. Okay, if you go to my Instagram, you can click the link in my bio. I have my kettlebell course where I'm taking on five new people every single week. Two, and it's literally called Kettlebell Course Volume One Learn How to Get Up and Swing. It's a six week course. There's five workouts a week, four to five workouts per week with one live coaching session a week with myself, where we go over and we do little sessions like this. Um, it's pretty fun. You're having a good time so far. So, uh, but if you guys are interested in that, then you guys can pop over to my Instagram and uh, click, on the, uh, click on the link. But don't leave just yet because we've got our five minute finisher right here. A lot of swings here. All right, so it's up to you. It's going to be between five, I'm sorry, between 15 and 20 kettlebell swings, okay? For only for five minutes. You're going to get things rolling and get, fix up the YouTube action and try to put those things into practice like we just were talking about. So if you're somebody who tends to just be hingy and just be pulling your hips back and down, think about sinking a little bit deeper, okay? Now, in order to do that, you need to have the proper timing with it. Okay, you're sitting back and down. <sighs> I'm gonna blow my nose real quick. Hold on. Hey yo. Uh -huh. All right. I'm a big nasal breather, by the way. Hence, always got to keep the nose clear. <laughs> All right. We are going to go in three, two, one. Let's go. Beauty. Shaking it out. Control that breath. Belly, ribs, chest. Nice control. Good. Shake it out. 15 seconds. Fast and loose. Feel those arms nice and relaxed. Going in 10. Let's go, baby. Three, two, one. Two down, three to go. 
Good, good, good. Thinking nice and powerful. What we got? All right, we got 40. We got a couple people on here. All right, here we go. Again, 15 to 20 swings. I'm going to try and stick with 20 each time now. Here we go. Three, two, one. Size that squeeze at the top. Nice. Three down, two to go. 15 seconds. Open it up. There we go. And five. Three, two, one. feeling? Thumbs up, shaka, shaka, shaka. All right. Good to bring that heart rate down a little bit. Just a quick five minutes there. Five minutes, a hundred swings. If you stuck with that, twenty swings every minute on the minute. But that right there, you use that as a finisher after your workout, or on a day where you're not really feeling, like getting a full 30, 40 minute hour workout in, that'll get the job done. But I will say, Amy, you, um, and I'll leave you with this. For that longest time when I was swinging very hingy, okay, without any kind of squatting, I was always under the reasoning like that's a full body swing or the kettlebell swing is a full body movement. I was so full of it because in reality, it's like, it's not until you add a little bit or sprinkle a little bit of a squat, the bottom of that swing, it's not until you do that where it really truly becomes a full body move. I feel my glutes on fire right now. That's something I never felt before when I was doing those other types of swings. So if you're somebody who wants to increase power, you want to reap the most benefits as humanly possible from the kettlebell swing, then I suggest incorporating that a little bit of a sprinkle, a little bit of a squat. And if you don't feel 100% locked in with how to do that, then again, there's a number of different resources that you can go to. Kettlebell Kings has an ex exorbitant amount of amazing coaches out there that will be happy to 
take you on and, and coach you, just literally do go right through their library. They're going to be right there. But you also have myself over at Docs Fitness. Like I said, I'd be, lo I'd be grateful and happy to help out anybody. Um, so if you have any questions, okay, with how to go and dive a little bit deeper into creating a nice, stronger, uh, more powerful and effective swing, don't hesitate to reach out to myself. Again, I have my kettlebell course that I'm going on. It's live now. I'm taking on five new people every single week, every Monday. So you can reach out to me. It is literally called Kettlebell Course Volume 1. Learn how to get up and swing where we literally, and it's burning fat, building muscle. But at the end of the day, the heart and soul of it is to create powerful, and an effective explosive swings in line with also learning the basics and learning a smooth uh, and crisp Turkish getup. Okay. So again, I hope everybody popped on here. I don't know what time we got rocking right now, but I hope you're able to at least pull one thing away. I'm grateful for the platform. Again, that brings like-minded individuals together from all parts of the world. And, um, I hope everybody has an absolutely incredible day. And again, do not hesitate to reach out with any kind of questions, either on Kettlebell Kings or to myself, excuse me. And um, yeah, hope everybody has an unbelievable day. Go Birds, baby. <laughs> you. See you all soon.